And we are back here live once again at the AWS Sydney Summit. Welcome to everyone. Uh, I'm your host, Dean Samuels, joined here uh, by Gabe. And we have a special guest today in Very the form special. of Phil. Uh, Phil um, is actually going to take us through some real, a really interesting topic. Before, we had a great conversation around IDEs and developers and so on. But just as important is a topic around security. That's right. And specifically, you're going to talk it. about innovations in cloud security for us. Yeah. Before we talk about innovations in cloud security, though, we need to talk about the weather. The weather. Can we talk today? about I haven't seen the weather. I've been in here for the last You guys have been inside hours. broadcasting all day. All right, so for everybody that's out there watching, you need to appreciate that we're right in the middle of Sydney, yep. right on a place called Darling Harbor. So outside of this big convention center, which is kind of dark with neon lights and all these people, and obviously us broadcasting here in front of the lights, is like bright blue sky, beautiful weather, and lots of people just milling around the lawns. Sydney's a great place to be, so I guess that's maybe a little recruiting pitch as well. Yeah. And that's awesome because the summer's over and the weather's still like this. So great like place to live. You developers. Right out there who want a great, nice uh, outdoor atmosphere, awesome team to work for, come down to Sydney. I Melbourne think, may be second best. Yeah, let's not talk about Melbourne. We're in Sydney, right? That's not cool. Oh, uh, Some of the guys from Germany or people from Germany were just waking up. I'll bet it's yep. cold there, so go ahead and tell us how cold it is in Germany just so we can level set a little bit, okay? All right, so security. Security. Um, what should we talk about security? We don't talk enough about, uh, I've noticed a couple things, right? When we talk to cloud teams and devs, we're not always getting the how to make security simple message, right? And conversely, when we're talking to security teams at a lot of our big customers or some of our small customers, yep. we're not always talking to them around how to understand the cloud and some of these new cloud technologies. So one of some of the things that we try to do here at Summit or in any of the other public talks is try to simplify the message for both teams. Try to make devs understand how easy and approachable security is so that you can implement it appropriately inside your environments and let security teams really understand what their dev teams are doing. Because you have to imagine in a large organization, maybe the devs sit way over here, maybe the infrastructure people are way over there, maybe the security people are way over here, and yep. sometimes culturally they're not just collaborating in the way that we do. Well, that, so. That's a good point. A lot of developers sometimes think that the security team is really a barrier to what they want to do yeah. and a real obstacle, but that's not, really not the case, right? That's yeah. not the just say no team, the security team. No, it not at all. Be that way. We took a chance on one of the talks we did here yesterday, actually. It was called um, Building a Security Culture. We had one of our more innovative customers, Zero, in from New Zealand. And they were really talking about their head of security engineering, was really talking about the cultural changes he had to make. And I know we're like at a technical conference right now and we're on a Twitch stream and stuff like that. But actually, what we're finding is customers through the AWS cloud have the same set to technology and building blocks and security tools as anybody else in the best around the world. Yep. So, but we find that. Some customers are getting this right and staying very secure in the cloud, and other customers maybe are not having such a good time. So the difference there is actually culture. It's breaking apart this central monolithic security structure yeah. that's worried about kind of setting a paper-based policy up front and then checking on a project towards the end and making some hopefully reasonable requests, maybe not reasonable policy? requests, I set out the rules yeah. the and then having right. to start them back again. So yeah. I mean, every time I say that, I'm like, do we still have to be here talking about this? But I think yeah. in some ways it's still very, very true. So all we're talking about doing is basically breaking that up. Uh, there's a philosophy now called embedding security champions across all of those different teams. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a dev team now that's trying to be agile, that's trying to do a new way to working, especially in the cloud, I want you to either feel like you're responsible for security or actually to have a person with a little bit of security in their title that sits down next to you. Yep. It's not some big mystery function off in the center of the organization. It's something that's embedded like and spread around everybody. Like human face on your team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's all that collaboration. Exactly. It's like that two pizza team where you have that, those different stakeholders, including security as well, security guys as well. So. No, how do you change that mindset in a very traditional yeah. enterprise organization? Though? Yeah, good question. Um, education and uh, in addition to that, I would actually say for security especially, yeah. top-down executive sponsorship is super important. The education part, I hope, is straightforward. And a lot of times, especially, you know, you guys are seeing us on stream, you can't see what we're looking at. We're looking at a huge expo hall yeah. with all of our technology and consulting partners, with AWS architects drawn on whiteboards. There's a lot of activity out here, right? And this is an educational conference for us. Yes. The whole idea here is to have it be free and widely accessible to thousands of people, including everybody on the stream to come and learn about the cloud. Right. And that education piece is really important for changing that cultural mindset within either security teams or dev teams to understand security. Top-down sponsorship, I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but if the head of risk or the CEO doesn't take it seriously, then probably the rest of the org won't. 
Uh, luckily, we're seeing definitely some visibility improvements around this by, I don't know, legal changes and stuff. Yeah, right. So and, it's changing. And so, Phil, uh, we have a question here from uh, Bretsky AWS. And Bretsky AWS uh, talks about uh, DevSecOps. Sure. Can you maybe explain De DevSecOps? Is DevSecOps including yeah, yeah. security into your CI CD pipeline? And that's it. What Can you Absolutely. explain that? Happy to. Um, so DevSecOps is really straightforward, right? And just look at the term. It's embedding security in the middle of a DevOps model. There's a lot of different ways to do this. We have three principles that we use. First, we call it security of the build pipeline. You know how we talk about security of the cloud? We talk yes. about security of the build pipeline, which is the thing that's going to be building these uh, dynamic environments, make sure it's secure. We talk about security in the pipeline, which is the security testing it's doing to make sure that things that come out of the pipeline are secure. Yep. And we talk about continuous security automation. So there's a bunch of tools and techniques for all those. I'm not sure how much detail I'll go into any of that right now. Um, I will reference, we did, who's we? I guess I did, and a co colleague of mine, Pierre Little, did. I think a pretty relevant talk on this topic. So if you're on your browser right now, just Google AWS Dev Days and DevSecOps, and you can see a great 30-minute talk on this with some cool demos and stuff where we try to give people a little bit more information. Well, so maybe we could talk a little bit about some recent uh, additions or features or services that we've brought to the table sure. AWS to help with security. Has the guard duty guy already like come out and jumped around in that his uniform for a while? Yeah. That was a lot of fun. All right, yeah. I want to talk about too much. We can pin a badge on you if you want. Do you want a, you want a guard badge? I need like a hat or something. <laughs> guard badge like guard duties. One of the super cool security services that we just came out, we've already talked about that before, I won't go into too much detail. I'll call out one thing that I've been doing with guard duty lately, because like, whoa, ninja star. <laughs> Um, when uh, when customers, when big customers around Australia want to talk about guard duty, usually I'll end up talking about them for a while and doing a little demo of some of the technologies. Um, and sometimes people are trying to figure out, well, isn't this the same as my traditional IDS or logging infrastructure? Yep. Like, what's guard duty really doing different that means I should be using it? I think one of the most important things in our first principle for security is identity, usually through our identity and access management service, right, IAM. Identity is ultimately important in the cloud. So one of the things that Guard Duty does is really focus on how that identity is used, and especially as those identity credentials are used. So we can tell like two quick examples. One is if an AWS account is being logged into multiple times around the whole world from different locations, because you probably don't want your user account being accessed from Sydney and London and I don't know. Uh, 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 Russia at the same time, that'll send up an alert. Another one is here, and this is a little more technical detail, the way we associate accounts yep. and credentials with new instances as they're spun up is through the metadata store. If you just Google this or look at our docs, you can see it, and actually you can see it through a browser, and you can see the short-term credentials that are associated with your EC2 instance. Well, the way that's supposed to work is those credentials are only ever attached to that instance, and it gives it permission to operate in the rest of the AWS environment. Yep. But what a bad guy does is, after they sort of get a hold of that operating system, because it may be a pat somebody forgot to apply, sure. they'll take that uh, uh, credentials and pull them out and try them all around the world to see what other AWS services they can get into inside of your account. Mm -hmm. This is not good behavior, and Guard Duty does exactly that. There's no other really IDS techniques on the market that can look at that association between the AWS account activity yeah. and yeah. especially yeah. external access at the same time, super unique to Guard Duty. And that's a, that's a powerful feature because uh, the credentials you mentioned that are on an instance, even though they're automatically rotated after a certain, certain period of time, so it addresses that long-term credentials type security um, sure. attack. Attack. Like you said, uh, uh, malicious users can still take those credentials and use them in different locations. And if you don't have something like guard duty enabled, it's very hard to actually pick that uh, that's happening, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for, okay. sure. for sure. Yeah. We've got two minutes left, and we've got a wonderful question from go. a viewer. John, or join Jess. Uh, what are one or two things that people should be aware of but aren't? So we've got about two minutes left, so maybe two tips. Sure, like about me personally? All right, no, let's talk about AWS Cloud Security, right? Um, <laughs> Uh, we just talked about uh, uh, users there. This is really counterintuitive, because the first way you access a counter, you make a static user account. We don't like that. Right. We that's, like you to use roles. We yeah. like you to use roles for a bunch of reasons. Yeah. The primary reason is when you assume a role, you get a temporary access to do what you're doing. So if somebody else ever gets that access as well, it's only good for a limited period of time. So number one, use roles. Learn about roles. Number two, hmm, I would say this. Encryption is not scary or expensive anymore. Yep. Use our AWS KMS, or Key Management Service. Turn it on, super, super cheap, and you've got encryption at rest across, I think we're up to 35 different AWS services pre-integrated now. So A, use a role. 
raw and B, definitely use encryption. About encryption, encryption everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah encryption anyway. Everywhere. And like, yeah. that's old school thinking yeah. to be like, oh, encryption's hard, there's overhead, it's not compatible, it's expensive. Yeah. Those days are behind us. Yeah. About encryption, I also know that we are recently FIPS 140 level two certified. Uh, yes, which means that you. now we meet government grade cryptographic module security levels. Boom. That right? was awesome hearing not from That's somebody reasons. that works all the time in security. That's it's thank not. you for picking up I on don't, that. But I say that is stuff. like the most stringent US federal government standard. Yep. We now adhere to that both in the cryptographic modules inside of our KMS service and inside of our cloud HSM service. So a big win for our highly regulated customers. So, so Phil, before we wrap up, um, that was good. Thank you. Be be before we wrap up, uh, just a question around, you know, what the viewers can maybe do uh, in terms of getting into uh, area, uh, security area like you are in. Uh, Adam, before I spoke about development, 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 but uh, can you ma maybe have your take on the security side? Security is a great field, it's a great background. Uh, I got into it um, through the offensive side, uh, and I think you need to be careful when you do that, but start to study up and look at some of the uh, popular uh, attacks that you see in the news and start to figure out and try to understand those better. Once you understand that side, you can understand how to defend. Like WASP, for example, the top yeah, web there's a lot of different ways to do it. Go to a Black Hat conference, look yep. at DEF CON videos. There's 10 years of history history of that stuff out there. Awesome. Well, Phil, thank you so much for your time. Really insightful um, uh, uh, topic here. Great discussion. Thanks pleasure. for your time. I'm sure we're going to talk about security a lot at yeah, AWS absolutely. Live. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. It's been a pleasure. Yep. And See we'll you be again. back in four minutes. Four minutes.